Fala galera, seja bem-vindo a mais um vídeo, eu sou o Mike Santos e está começando agora o melhor podcast do Brasil, esse aqui é diferente, tá? Estamos aqui com um gringo muito top, Garrett! My man! What's up? Well, you know fellow Portuguese, so I'll be speaking in English for this podcast and we'll do the best we can do. Fica até o final, que ele vai contar toda a história dele, vai ser aqui com legenda, vai ser bem legal, tá? Ele... ele... Construiu um império, né? uma empresa gigantesca nos Estados Unidos. Então, fica até o final que esse podcast vai ser muito top, tá? E se você não é inscrito ainda no canal, por favor, se inscreva, tá? A gente vai até esperar você se inscrever aqui no canal. Já se inscreveu? Muito obrigado, tamo junto. Conte pra mim sua história, seu bairro, sua cidade, onde você nasceu, conta tudo pra mim. So um, I grew up in New York, uh, only child, grew up with a single mom, uh, no siblings, small one bedroom apartment, and always knew that I wanted to create businesses. So uh, I got my start in the concert promotion. I used to book big arenas and, uh, and, and artists and sell tickets to concerts. Um, and from there, I got into the tech space. Um, I ran the marketing for a company called Yik Yak which was a big social media app in the US. Uh, and then I discovered e-commerce back uh, about 10 years ago when uh, I discovered hoverboards. You ever see a hoverboard? You stand on it and you ride around. I have, that's my translation for Brazilian. Uh, so I started going out to China to the Canton Fair and uh, finding viral products to sell, importing them to the US, Uh, selling to retail stores, selling on Amazon, on Shopify, on eBay. Um, and then I discovered dropshipping about seven years ago. And dropshipping totally changed my life because I never had any inventory problems. Um, I could sell as much as I want and I could scale as high as I wanted to and I never ran out of inventory. So I built my first dropshipping store. It scaled from zero to $2 million dollars in 60 days and went on to do you know, over $10 million in sales my first year. Um, after that, I uh, built one of the biggest coaching programs in the US. I uh, was a big influencer and uh, mentor um, in the e-commerce space. And basically, we built Zendrop uh, to solve the problem of fulfillment for our students. Quantos milhões você faturou no seu início com drop, o dropship né? e com a sua mentoria? Quantos milhões foi? So, my first dropshipping store scaled from zero to $2 million dollars in 60 days. Um, and the first year, we did about $10 million dollars in sales. Uh, we did that for a couple of years in a row. Uh, and then I started looking into digital marketing and I saw a lot of people selling courses. Um, people who were not really qualified to sell courses were selling courses on everything. Uh, and I thought, hey, I was one of the best dropshippers, so I'm qualified to teach other people how to sell. Um, and that quickly became also a $10 million a year business. Um, so it was, you know, we built about a half a million person email list. Um, I had about, you know, tens of thousands of students. Um, and yeah, basically went from dropshipping to the mentorship. Um, it was the natural next step. And, but I was becoming the e-commerce guru and I didn't really feel right in that position. So I wanted to be behind the scenes, and that, that's why I built Zendrop. Mas quando você começou com o Dropship, você teve alguma ajuda? Alguém te ajudou? Como é que foi seu start ali no Dropship? Você fez tudo sozinho? Como é que foi o começo? Yeah, so actually, um, I had never heard of dropshipping before. And I was at a trade show in Dallas where I had a booth, and I was there for three days, and I was talking to people, um, and I was, you know, I was selling products at this trade show. And um, I got back to my hotel room and I had a flight the next morning at 7 a.m. And uh, I was about to go to sleep and I got an email on my phone that said, how to sell products without ever seeing or touching them. And I was like, how is that possible? So I was very intrigued and I was like, should I go to sleep or should I open the email? Should I go to sleep? Should I open the email? I ended up opening the email uh, and watching a webinar, watching a training on drop shipping, on basically finding products from AliExpress putting them on your Shopify store and running ads. And I was very excited about this because, you know, I could sell anything I wanted to without buying inventory. So I actually was so excited that 
I went to the airport uh, the next morning at four o'clock in the morning and built my first dropshipping store. Um, and I put up my ads all within about two hours before my flight took off. Um, and by the time I landed, I already had about five sales in my store. Por que, que com você deu certo o dropship e por que, que tem muitas pessoas que não dão certo no dropship? Qual foi seu diferencial? Okay, that's a great question. Um, and I've coached personally uh, in my group coaching program hundreds of people, and I would always know if people are going to be successful or not based on one main thing, and it was: do people show up to the game excited or do they show up to the game frustrated? If you're excited about dropshipping, if you wake up every morning and you're excited about testing new products and trying new things, eventually you're going to catch something that works. Um, but a lot of people get into business and they're skeptical. They're, you know, they know it works for someone else, but they don't think it could work for them. And they're like, I'll try it again. This is my last time trying. And then it doesn't work and they end up giving up. But the people who are excited, they're like, this is an, a huge opportunity. There's millions of products that we could sell to millions of people. I can't wait to wake up and start testing products. Those people are going to succeed because the only way you fail in dropshipping is if you give up. Because if you test enough products, you will find something that becomes profitable and that you can scale. And a lot of people also fail because um, they put too much energy into making everything perfect before they start running ads. Right? What do I mean by that? I mean. Um, There's people that want to start dropshipping and they spend a bunch of time and money um, trying to make their pages perfect, uh, trying to make their ad copy perfect, make custom videos, and they're putting all this effort into one product and then they launch it and the ad's not profitable. Um, what I always say is use your energy to test as many products as you could and don't perfect any of it. So you want to basically use whatever images or videos you have, make the landing page very simple and test 10 different products. You know, see which ones get the lowest cost per clicks, see which ones start getting some sales. And then once you identify a possible winning product, then you want to invest your energy into making it better. Qual que é a sua visão do mercado dos Estados Unidos, né? E qual que é mais fácil, nos Estados Unidos ou no Brasil é mais fácil de fazer dropship? So, I've been here in Brazil um, four times in the last five months. I've been coming out here a lot. Um, because I see a huge opportunity in Brazil. Um, basically, to sum it up, it feels like Brazil is about five years behind the U.S. So everything that worked for me five years ago is working for people here in Brazil. Um, it's actually a lot easier to be successful here in Brazil than it is in the U.S. because there's less competition on ads. The way it, ads work is that the more people that are spending money on ads, the more it costs you to get your ad seen. And now in the U.S., there's all these huge companies spending money on ads that it's hard to compete with. Um, so in the U.S., to be successful, you need to build a brand. Um, you need to have a, a store that your customers come back to over and over again because you might actually lose money on your first sale. If it costs you $50 to acquire a customer uh, that's paying you $40, you're losing money. But if that customer comes back three more times and pays $40 three more times, that's an extra $120. And the only way to get repeat customers is to have a brand or some kind of continuity. So the US uh, is all about brands. Um, also, TikTok is, I think you understood that word, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> TikTok is a, a huge opportunity. It's a new ad platform. Um, people are just starting to get onto it, so it's very cheap to advertise. And you have more and more buyers that are on TikTok now. It's the, the demographic of the people on the platform is getting older, so those people will actually buy your products. So in Brazil, it's all about rapid fire, testing as many products as you could, and finding a reliable supplier when you scale so that your shipments can go out. In the US, it's all about building a brand for repeat customers. And that will be the case in Brazil because Brazil is just five years behind the US. So if people in Brazil want to be successful, Uh, really, all you need to do is look at what's happening in the U.S. right now and start following that because you'll be ahead of the curve. Mas por que que vocês estão vindo para o Brasil, né? Já chegou com um escritório gigante nos melhores bairros aqui da Savassi, né? Que é aqui em BH. Me conte mais. Por que que você está vindo com tudo para o Brasil? So Brazil is a huge opportunity for us um, because the market here is growing. Like I mentioned, uh, Brazil is 
you know, just five years behind the U.S. So for us to be able to get ahead of the drop shipping curve, because we know what's going to happen here, it's a big opportunity for our company. Um, also, Brazil is very innovative. There's uh, a huge growing digital marketing and e-commerce scene. Um, and we have solutions that can help people scale their business and do better. Um, aside from that, we found many talented people here in Brazil. Uh, we found a lot of passionate people that are helping us on our mission. And, um, you know, it's just it's a big growth opportunity for us to come in and expand internationally. Uh, aside from that, launching a company in another country, right, us coming to Brazil, it's almost like starting a whole separate company because the language barrier, the cultural barrier, the laws, you know, the tax rules, et cetera. Uh, so although we're leveraging the same back end and, and fulfillment and solutions that we have, um, there's so many new things that we're doing here in Brazil that we need a team here. And we're actually hiring out some of our uh, holding companies, leadership team in Brazil, some marketing tech people, because they're very talented. Uh, and we, you know, we can get a lot for our money um, here as well. So, um, yeah, that's why we're here. Explica mais para a gente com mais detalhes, né? O que a Zendrop faz, né? O que ela vai trazer de benefícios para as pessoas que utilizarem a plataforma? Yeah, if you're a dropshipper and you use Zendrop, you'll know the benefits right away. Um, but the main things are that we have, you know, close to a million products you can choose from that ship anywhere around the world. Uh, we have an operation in China where we work with many different shipping lines. We work directly with factories so we can get low prices. Um, every package that gets shipped out from Zendrop, we actually print out a custom branded thank you card, put it in the box and ship it out. So it feels like it came from your brand as opposed to, um, you know, a random Chinese factory. Um, aside from that, we have a no questions asked refund policy. So if you refund your customer, uh, we'll issue you a refund on Zendrop. You don't have to come chase us down. Um, we have a bunch of other great features like product bundles, uh, subscription boxes, auto fulfillment. The idea is that when you scale your dropshipping store, you want to have a supplier you can trust. You don't want to worry about, you know, are these products going to get shipped out? Actually, when I was a big dropshipper myself, I had a supplier that I was working with for about a year uh, and I was doing about 2000 orders a day and the supplier decided he wanted to make extra money. So he didn't ship out my products. He actually sent me 7000 fake tracking numbers at $50 each. You could do the math. Uh, and it was really challenging to get my business back from that because people didn't get their orders. You know, the, the site got a bad reputation and I basically had to start over. So if you work with Zendrop, uh, we're a supplier that you can trust. Um, we're here. We're not overseas somewhere else. You can literally come see us. And um, yeah, our whole goal is to make your life easier. A gente tá aqui falando de dropship, aquela coisa toda, né? Mas tem muita gente que não sabe o que é dropship ainda, né? Explica com mais detalhes o que é o dropship, como que funciona o dropship. Um, dropshipping is my favorite business model um, because it takes little to no upfront capital um, and you can sell anything you want without having to go buy products and buy inventory. So the way dropshipping works is um, you decide what you want to sell, you add it to your store, your Shopify store, and then you sell it and then we ship it out to your customer for you. So you never need to buy inventory. Um, and it's cool because if you want to succeed in e-commerce, the goal is to test as many products as you could until you find one that's profitable. And if you weren't drop shipping, you would have to be spending tens or hundreds or millions of dollars on inventory to be able to test that many products. With drop shipping, you could simply one click, add 20 different products to your store, run ads to all 20 of them, see which one people buy and then scale those ones. So the beauty of it is, is there's there's no upfront capital for inventory. Um, you could sell anything, you could test anything, and you could sell as much as you want without running out of products. O que que você aprendeu nos Estados Unidos que você pode trazer para o Brasil? Dá umas três dicas tops boas aí para gente. Yeah, um, this is really important actually. So the first thing is um, a method that I used to call drop surfing, which is basically to ride the waves of what's trending. You know, so many people say don't sell saturated products because too many people are selling them. That's not the way you want to look at it. If other people are selling a product, that means you can sell it too. So number one is test products that you see selling in the market um, because you'll have the best chance of success. Um, the second thing is um, I like to have a two store method. I like to have 
one store that's for testing. It's a general store. You could run beauty products or athletic products or um, electronics. You could run all the different products through this store with no brand. And then when you find a product that works well, you build a niche store um, around that product. So for example, if you're testing 20 products and um, you know magnetic eyelashes are the one that get you the most sales, you'd create a second store that's branded for women's beauty products and you would start running all your ads to that branded store because now you can remarket those customers and you could sell them other products because you know that they're interested in beauty products and you can build a brand around that. So the second thing is the, the two store uh, method. And then the third thing is you should always be testing. Sometimes people find a winning product and they're like, all right, I'm just gonna stop testing other products because this is working. Products don't last forever. They might last one week, they might last a month, they might last a year. Um, sometimes winning products are actually seasonal as well. You know, I've had products that I sold during the winter time uh, and then I turned off my ads when it started getting warmer, um, products that were like snow related. And then I would turn the ads back on next winter and it would work again. Uh, so anyway, my point is, if you find a winning product, you should still continue to test. Um, you should be investing a lot of your profits into testing more products because the more products you test, the more winners you're gonna find. And if you could have several winners, you can make a lot of money. Uh, and then the last thing I wanna say is your standards need to rise. Maybe making $100 a day for you would be life-changing. Maybe making $1,000 a day would be life-changing. Well, with drop shipping, I've had days where I've made over $100,000 in one day, right? So the possibilities here are pretty much endless and you wanna have high standards and high goals because you can make a lot of money in this business model. Tem como ganhar dinheiro com dropship? Tem como ficar rico com dropship? E por quê? I mean, I'm a case study, right? Um, <laughs> I made a lot of money dropshipping. Um, I actually, my store scaled from, it was doing about $500 a day. Um, and then I, I had to drive from Los Angeles to Florida, which is about a five day drive. And during that drive, it went from 500 to 2000 to 7000 to 35000 to $50,000 per day. And I was making about $20,000 to $25,000 a day in profit, which was by far the most money I'd ever made before. Um, and the reason why you can make a lot of money with dropshipping is because it's simply a matter of figuring out which ads you could spend money on and get more money out of. So if you put in $1 and you get out two, how do you put in $100 and get out 200 Or put in $1,000 and get out 2000 Or put in... $20,000 and get out 40 or 50,000. It's very scalable. Um, prior to drop shipping, I used to import products and have them in warehouses and I would sell, but I would run out of inventory and I'd have to turn my ads off. With drop shipping, since we're buying directly from the manufacturers, we have unlimited inventory most of the time. So you could scale as big as you want. And it's been proven time and time again. I've done this, you know, on probably 10 different stores at this point. Um, you know, we have a bunch of Zendrop sellers that are doing $100,000 a month, a million dollars a month. I've seen it repeatable, uh, repeated and repeated and repeated. So yeah, this business model totally changed my life. Um, it's changed the lives of hundreds of, of my students that I've seen. And um, our whole Zendrop community is passionate about this business model as well. Qual que é o significado de sucesso para você? O que significa sucesso? Uma pessoa de sucesso? It's a good question. Um, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago, success would have been a Lamborghini and a mansion. Um, but I've attained those things and realized that those things bring short-term pleasure, not long-term joy. Uh, so for me, success is being able to impact other people's lives, um, growing a business and a community of people that are passionate, being able to get up in the morning and be excited about what I'm working on, um, help other people make money and ultimately be able to leave an impact because, uh, you know, the world today, uh, you know, with what's going on, with the way the culture is moving, um, with the way social media is, is exploding and people are spending so much energy in their phones and thinking they know what they want. You know, a lot of people are going down paths in life that won't lead to long-term joy. Um, they're really chasing short-term pleasure. And, um, Success for me 
is to be able to be an example that, you know, starting with your why, starting with feeling good, starting with being happy and being a good person brings you success in business. And I want to be an example of that to show other people, to help direct people back onto a better path in life. So that's my de definition of success. Me conte os livros que você leu, que abriu sua visão. Os três livros, os melhores livros. Well, I'm, uh, I'm very into personal development, spirituality, mindset. Um, and I think those are the things that people need to focus on and learn to be successful in life and be happy. So the books that I recommend um, are personal development, mindset, spirituality books. Um, one is called The Untethered Soul. Um, it's a book that really talks about your inner voice and the way you talk to yourself and, you know, ways to calm your mind and be more happy. Um, another book is called The Power of Now, uh, which is really cool because I believe that all creation happens in the present moment. And by reading that book, you can really understand deeper what it means to be present and what it means to create from that um, state of being. And then um, the third book I recommend is called The 5 AM Club which is actually written by my favorite author and friend of mine, Robin Sharma. Um, and I love that book because it's a story of people that were lost in life and they get invited out to this billionaire's private island and he shows them all these things about building habits and about getting up early and about keeping promises to yourself. Um, and it's a really easy book to read, but you get a lot out of it. So any book that helps you understand your mind, uh, your soul, um, any book that helps you understand that discipline is what brings self-confidence and self-confidence brings the ability to try new things and trying new things brings success. Anything that kind of talks about that, I recommend. Muita gente tem medo de empreender, de, de criar um negócio, criar uma empresa, né? O que você pode falar para essas pessoas? Life is full of fear and overcoming fear, right? Um, and your reality of your existence is totally based on your experiences and your beliefs of what's possible is based on how you've seen the world. You know, if your parents made $40,000 a year, uh, your subconscious mind believes that you should make $40,000 a year. You know, other people might do make more, but for you, $40,000 is possible. So to overcome your fears, um, it's about consistently outperforming your beliefs. If you believe $40,000 a year is real, and you keep working and keep trying and keep working and keep trying, eventually you're going to make a hundred thousand. And now that 40,000 belief is out the door. Now you have a new level of threshold um, to be able to push past that fear. And it, it really boils down to two things because people overcomplicate this stuff. Uh, it comes down to having a vision of what you want in life and having discipline. Those are the, the two um, pieces of the recipe to be able to overcome fear. And a vision is very important because so many people actually don't even know what they want in life. They sit there mindlessly scrolling on Instagram and, you know, they're seeing cars and watches and they're like, yeah, if I had that, I'd be happy. But they never really take time to think, what do I want my life to look like in, you know, 10 years and 20 years? Having a vision is the first step because every day, every morning you get up and you imagine that vision and you feel it in your body. And what you're doing is you're training your subconscious to guide you to that vision. So you need the vision to be able to get yourself to be guided there. And the second step of it is discipline. Um, without discipline, your vision is just a dream. Uh, with discipline, you know, when you're keeping promises to yourself, what you're doing is uh, every time you keep a promise to yourself, your subconscious feels worthy of more, right? If you say you're gonna go to the gym five times in a week uh, and you only go two times, you know, you might justify it in your head, oh, my knee was hurting or I wasn't feeling great. Uh, but your subconscious mind is going to be like, oh, you couldn't even go to the gym five times. How could you go succeed in a business? You don't feel worthy. But if you say, I'm going to go to the gym five times this week and you get up every morning and you go, at the end of the week, you're going to build up this whole new level of self-confidence, which allows you to see more opportunities in the world. And you'll take action on more of them because you believe in yourself more. And same thing goes to with, uh, with your vision. You know, if you say, I'm going to wake up every morning, I'm going to go on a walk, I'm going to embody my vision so that I can attract it into my life. And you do that every day. Eventually, that life's going to happen. Because I'm a firm believer that the way you feel in the present moment 
creates the life around you. So to be able to overcome fear, it's really simple. You know, you need to take time to understand what do you really want in life, have a vision, and you need to really honor your promises to yourself and be disciplined. And then by doing that, you'll outperform what you believe to be true and you'll break past those levels and be able to take on new levels. Quanto tempo demorou para ter resultado, né? E quais foram as suas maiores frustrações, né? E como você conseguiu é, superar, né, as dificuldades, os problemas que apareciam ali na sua operação? Yeah, so, um, you know, in my dropshipping business, I got lucky. You know, I, I uh, my first product that I ever sold took off. But really luck is a byproduct of taking action and trying things. So, I've been an entrepreneur now for about 13 years. Um, and I didn't start seeing results in my career until probably eight years into it. Um, so, you know, by saying I got lucky and things took off quickly with drop shipping, well, you know, I, I've tried hundreds of things before that. Um, and to kind of overcome the frustrations, you know, when you're in a business, you're filled with excitement, you're filled with fear, you're filled with doubts, you're filled with conflicting thoughts, you're filled with moments of you know, feeling really motivated and you're also filled with moments of thinking that you're on the wrong path. And bottom line is your mind can talk you in many different directions and ultimately be so overwhelming that you'll give up. So the key to kind of getting past that frustration and that overwhelm is working on yourself. Um, I think it actually starts with your energy, which starts with your physical body. So for me to get past those frustrations and push past those hard times, It's as simple as instead of sitting around thinking, get up and go for a walk, go for a run, work out, meditate, do things that make you feel good because then your mind will talk to you in a, in a better language. It'll, it'll talk to you in a better way. Um, and also, you know, I still have the same level of frustrations I had when I was first starting out just at a different level. You know, you always think that you're on this path to get somewhere. And then when you finally get there, you'll be free and everything will go as you want in life and things will be easy. But the truth is right when you get there, you're going to want to go somewhere else. And then right when you get there, you're going to want to go somewhere else. You're never going to be at a point in life where you got there. You're going to always want to continue going. So it's important to remind yourself uh, that you have to enjoy the journey. You have to enjoy the, the hardships and the easy parts. You know, so many people want things to be easy, but life would be so boring if it was easy. Uh, and so many people think that there's, you know, a right way that things are supposed to happen. And in reality, there is no right way. If you read the biographies of the greatest entrepreneurs, greatest world changers in the world, they all have their own unique story. They all have their own hard, hardships that they went through. And you don't hear about those things. You know, someone like Abraham Lincoln, right? When you think of Abraham Lincoln, you think of a president who ended slavery in the U.S. But if you read his story, you know, He didn't have any success until he was like 60 years old. He ran for office for 20 years and kept losing and losing. And he lost his wife and he lost his kid and he lost another wife. And he had so many hardships. But you see, Abraham Lincoln ended slavery. So in your life, when you think you keep running into hardships and frustrations, you just have to know it's part of the journey. And one day when you look back, it's going to all make sense. And if you can remind yourself of that regularly, uh, There's nothing that can stop you. Vocês estão vindo muito forte para o Brasil, né? escritório gigante, estão acreditando muito no Brasil. Você acredita que vai vir muitos milionários através do dropship, né? E quais, você, quais são as dicas que você poderia dar para essas pessoas que querem ficar milionárias trabalhando com a internet? Yeah, I mean, I can guarantee you that there will be tons of new millionaires made in dropshipping here in Brazil because I've seen it happen in the U.S. I was part of it, I felt it, and uh, It's happening here. I mean, there's new people every day that are figuring out winning products because it's actually relatively easy to make a million reais in sales. It's just a matter of finding a winning product and spending a lot of money on ads. Um, it's going to be the people that are motivated and excited that are going to win. The people that are skeptical and frustrated are going to give up. So if you want the chance of winning, um, it's not so much what do I do? It's more so who do I need to be, right? Most people are like, What do I need to do? Where do I need to find products? How do I you know, scale my ads? How do I test things? Which are good questions, but focus more on who do I need to be? I need to be excited. I need to be happy. I need to be grateful for the opportunity because that's what's going to drive you to keep going. 
and eventually something's gonna work. I mean, I've seen people go through 60, 70 products before they hit a winning product. And most people would have given up on three or five. That's why I say when you're testing, don't worry about making things perfect. Just do as much as you could. And when you find something that works, hone in on it and scale it. So I guarantee you there's going to be many millionaires made here. And if you want to be one of them, you have to be excited and you have to be motivated. Uh, and one piece of advice I'd give you to, uh, you know, to make sure that you can actually scale your business is the first thing is outsource your customer support because customer support's a tricky thing. You need to have good customer support. And if you're running it yourself, um, number one, you won't do it as good as somebody else because if it's their full-time job, they'll be answering faster and better. Uh, but number two, the truth of the matter is most of your customers aren't reaching out to you because they want to say hello. They're reaching out because they're angry about something. And if you're running your own customer support, and you're reading all these emails, it's gonna to start to make you believe that your business is not good because you're getting all the problems and you're only seeing problems, even though many of your customers are happy. So the first step is outsource your customer support, free up your time. And then the second step would be to outsource your marketing, ideally, uh, where you hire someone that could run your Facebook or TikTok ads, but not, hey, I need you to run my Facebook or TikTok ads, Someone who could follow your rules. You figure it out and you tell them, you know, if cost per acquisition is less than that, double the budget. If cost per click is higher than this, kill the ad set. You give them the rules, they do the work, the customer support's being done, and now you have time to be creative. So my one piece of advice is to outsource the things that are taking up most of your time and energy, um, especially things that are making your energy worse, like customer support and um, spend more time pondering on what's next and looking around and scouring products and testing new stuff. Galera, bate uma, um print desse momento aqui e marca a gente lá no Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah, if you guys, uh, you know, really want to get started in dropshipping, if you want to create some more freedom in your life, You know, if you want to be able to earn money while traveling or doing whatever you want, dropshipping is a great business model. Um, it's changed my life. It is a special place in my heart. And that's why I'm so excited to be able to share it with you guys. Um, Zendrop is the best platform. I know I'm the CEO and founder, so I am biased, but I am confident that we're the best solution for you. So if you guys want to become successful, become millionaires dropshipping, Uh, definitely go to zendrop.com, sign up, connect your store, go look. We have tons of trending products. We have educational content. Um, plus, if you follow us on social media, we can connect there. And uh, thanks so much for having me on, brother. E se você quer conhecer mais, né, entre no perfil dele, o Instagram dele está aqui embaixo, suba Zendrop. A gente vai deixar aqui também o site para você ir lá conhecer, já se cadastrar, para você começar a utilizar, tá? Muita gente do Brasil já está utilizando, né? Então você tem que ser esperto, tá? A plataforma é nova, boa e a hora é agora. Se você não está utilizando, você deve utilizar para você alcançar aí a facilidade, né? Porque você não é bobo, né? Você quer facilidade, você quer produtos bons, fornecedores bons. Então, a Zendrop, não perca essa oportunidade. Estamos junto demais. Valeu, galera! Valeu! 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 Valeu. <risos>